What do Falcons do? We rise up. Welcome to Rise Up Reactions, the show where we talk all things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and in general, the sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning, the Golden Hard Dog, and a lifelong sports fan. Coming back to you today after a week-long absence, I apologize. I was in Hawaii uh, on vacation with my wife, kind of for her birthday week, um, and just we had an opportunity to go, so we took it. Uh, there's been a lot of news that's come out for the Falcons since that time. Two big hires in particular. One is we finally have our head coach returning to the Falcons is Raheem Morris. He was our defensive coordinator from 2015 to 2020. Uh, prior to that, he was the uh, head coach of Tampa Bay at one point in time. Uh, he's been with the Washington Redskins. And most recently, uh, he was the defensive coordinator for the Rams after we let him go. Uh, and he has turned that unit. He won a Super Bowl with them uh, as soon as we let him go. And then he has turned that unit into a solid defensive unit the last two years with names that you can't even, you don't even recognize uh, from an NFL standard. So they have been very good this year. And I, I do think that it's a good hire overall. He becomes Atlanta's first black coach uh, to ever be hired, not just as an interim role, but as the official head coach. So making history in that regard. Um, ultimately, I don't think that matters as much. I just care if he can coach or not, and he's somebody that certainly has shown that he has the ability to coach people up. He is very well liked by players. Roddy White has come out and basically said that he is who he is because of Raheem Morris. Um, you have other players. Jalen Ramsey's come out and said, man, I can't believe he's gotten this opportunity. Thank God like somebody finally hired him. He deserves this. So a lot of players who he's worked with in the past absolutely adore him and love him. I think he could bring a solid culture change. Initially, I was not really stoked about the hire. I'm, I'm going to be very clear. I was not super stoked. It was okay, but it wasn't great in my mind. I was thinking more along the lines, I would have loved to have Jim Harbaugh, but he ended up, I think we pretty much known he was going to the Chargers this entire time. Bill Belichick, I was never excited for, never on board for. Thank God we didn't do that. Now I don't know where Belichick's going to go. But there were a couple of guys. You know, obviously, we kind of thought we might want an offensive-minded guy, like a Ben Johnson or a Bobby Slowick. Um, you know, somebody like that. But I think we've gotten a good pairing with the second hire, which is also coming from the Rams in Zach Robinson being the quarterback's coach for the Rams uh, these last few years. He has helped uh, turn them into a Super Bowl or Super Bowl caliber team with the Rams. Um, you know, he has some experience in that regard. He's worked with Raheem Morris for the last three years, so these are guys that know each other really, really well. So I think that whoever we get at quarterback is going to be set up to be in a position to succeed because of three things. We have good offensive skill players. We have a new offensive, uh, not an offensive quarterback, but um, uh, c uh, coach, yeah, new quarterback coach, if I can get my words out here, and then we also have Raheem Morris, who is a defensive-minded guy and can help teach a young quarterback, or even a veteran if that's the route we go, how, how defenses think, what to be looking for. So we have a few things going in favor of the Falcons this next season. And again, we have a very, very tough schedule next year. I know we don't know when we play these teams, but we're going to be playing the AFC uh, West, which is you know currently some sides of the Kansas City Chiefs, who are once again going to the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, you've got the Denver Broncos in there. You've got the Las Vegas Raiders. You've got the Chargers. So we're going to get to see Jim Harbaugh, a uh, coach that we thought we wanted. We're going to get to see him. I don't know if that game is at home or away. I'm wanting to say that one is away, though. But either way, we're going to be getting uh, the, you know, the Chargers again. Uh, it seems like we've gotten them several times over the last few years. Uh, and then we're also going to play the NFC East, which is the Cowboys, the Eagles, the uh, Giants, and the uh, Washington Commies. Who knows if they'll undergo a name change this offseason. But again, it's a tough schedule. And then we got guys like, I think we're playing the Minnesota Vikings. I think we're playing, it's either Minnesota Vikings or, yeah, it's the Minnesota Vikings. And then we're playing uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And we're also going to be playing, um, oh gosh, who else are we playing there? I've said the, uh, let's see here, who are we playing? We're playing in the North, we're playing in the East, we're playing in the South. We play all of our opponents in the South. The West. Who are we playing from the West? Oh, yeah, we got to play Seattle from the West, it looks like. So, again, not the easiest schedule in the world. It's going to be tough. But Raheem Morris, I think, brings us from what I thought with Arthur Smith would be a 5-12 and team. 
up to potentially a 9-8 and eight or a 10-7 team, depending on how things go and what we do at quarterback. We certainly are going to have the tools to win the NFC South. It's not a division that's going to be particularly difficult to win. It's not been particularly difficult to win the last few years. We just haven't executed, and that's been the kicker here the entire time. That's why Arthur Smith no longer has a job with the Falcons, and Raheem Morris is coming back as head coach. Uh, people have been talking about is Terry Fontenot on the hot seat as well. I don't think so. I think Terry Fontenot has done an excellent job the last two years of doing what Arthur Smith wanted and putting the talent on the field that Arthur Smith requested. Arthur Smith was the problem the entire time, and he is the guy that could not execute on the talent that was brought in. Um, I do think that Terry Fano needs to get his signature quarterback this offseason, whether it be through the draft or through free agency. I think if he does that, he certainly buys himself four to five more years. But just look at the guys that we brought in last year. Look at what we've done with virtually no salary cap since Terry Fontenot has gotten in here. We had an awful 2021 draft with the exception of Kyle Pitts. And a really solid 2022 draft and an amazing 2023 draft where almost every single player contributed this year and contributed in a meaningful way. And then the same thing with free agency. The first two years of Terry Fontenot's regime, we didn't really have any salary cap to work with. Last year, we had negative $70 million of dead cap going into it, which is basically one-third of your roster going to pay players that don't exist on it anymore and still found a way to be competitive, even though we were supposed to be really bad. But then this past year, bringing in incredible free agents to turn around the defense. You had your Calais Campbell, David Onyemata, uh, Caden Ellis. Uh, you had guys like Nate Lamont who have been found as undrafted free agents. You have uh, Jesse Bates, who is the all-pro player that we expected him to be coming in and revitalizing this defense. We had Ryan Nielsen coming in, who has now gone on to be the Jacksonville Jaguars offensive coordinator because that's kind of what happens when you get rid of your head coach. But we've done well to try and fill those roles in the last two years, and that's all thanks to Terry Fontenot. Now, I don't know why he's kind of taking a back seat here uh, in the eyes of Arthur Blank. I don't, I don't know what that's about. It seems really strange the way they've gone about this with him. But either way, the Falcons have Raheem Morris. I am really excited for the future for the Falcons. Um, initially thought this was just kind of a mid-hiring. The more I look into it, the more excited I am for him to get a second job as a head coach. Uh, he hasn't had one since, oh gosh, I think it's been 17 years now. So we'll see what he's learned as a defensive coordinator. But guys, that's all I got for you today. Uh, we were going to be having the Super Bowl. I was absolutely wrong based on my post. Uh, it's going to be the Kansas City Chiefs versus the San Francisco 49ers. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is a repeat of a Super Bowl from the last six or seven years here. It seems like the those two names have popped up in the past. I think it actually might have been Patrick Mahomes' first Super Bowl, if I, if I can remember that correctly. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing. I'm back. We have more videos to come out in the near future. We'll be talking about the last few drafts and the failures of some drafts, what I do think we should have done in place of them, but what I think we did because of Arthur Smith. But thank you for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing. And as always, rise up.